Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 tutor. And in this section, we're going to cover the topic of arc length. So we're switching gears from the previous several sections where we were looking at uh, techniques of integration. We've done our partial fractions. We've done our uh, you know, integration uh, with the trigonometric integrals. And we've done several techniques of integration. Uh, we looked at the inverse trig functions and the hyperbol hyperbolic functions and all of that. Here is kind of like a a grocery bar or a break and we're going to start to talk about a new topic and move into several sections that talk about new material. So the stuff that you learned before is important. You need to know it obviously, but this is one of those things I was talking about before in Calculus 2 where you learn a lot about a lot of different things. So this is sort of a different topic. It's called arc length. Well, all it means, it's, it's, a sim it's a fancy sounding uh, title, but all it means is that if you have uh, a graph of some function and you cut it off here and you end it here and it, maybe it squiggles like this or it might go down or it might go up whatever it's some sort of arc okay in, in, uh, in space in your plane and you would like to calculate the length of that arc now if it's a straight line obviously you can hold a ruler up to it and you can see how far that goes and that's the length of that line right but what if it's a curved graph or maybe even a squiggly line like this how would you actually figure out how long that line is well you could you can go and start to try to measure it and sort of try to use your ruler all the way around, but using a long straight ruler with a curved graph, it gets hard. So calculus is really good at doing things like that, finding the length of really odd shapes, the volume, the surface area of really complicated things. It's one of the things calculus is used for, so we're going to do that with arc length. Okay, so basically uh, we want to find the length of a function between two points. So if I were going to draw it graphically, it would look something like this. This is your regular uh, x, y plane, okay, just the one that you know, you know and love. And here is some, and I'm going to go ahead and switch colors here. Here is some uh, arc, okay. It starts at this point and just kind of goes up, and let's say it goes like this. And you define uh, this to start and stop at two points, okay. And this point is called A, and this point is called B. Okay, so over on the uh, x-axis here, uh, this is x is equal to A units over here, and this is x is equal to B units. So you might have a, a section of a graph that goes like this, uh, and you know this might be uh, x is equal to 2, and it might go up to 5. And you might have some function that you have defined only over this range, and that is the function that describes this curve. So whatever you want to try to find the length of, you must have some sort of function to represent it. And, you know, it could be anything that describes that shape, okay? So what we want to do is we actually want to find the actual length here. You're going to end up getting a number in inches or a number in feet or in miles or whatever, depending on, you know, what units you're, you know, in real life, what, what units your coordinate system has associated with it uh, there. So you're you're actually finding a real length here. Now how would we actually do that? I'm going to take you through a, a real basic uh, kind of proof and we're going to derive the little formula uh, that you use and then we're going to use it in several problems so you get some practice with it. So the magic of calculus here, if you remember back to calculus 1, is uh, generally the way things are derived in calculus, just sort of a uh, kind of motivation here, usually what you do is you divide things up into little bitty segments. Okay, you, d you chop up what you're trying to do, whether it's volume or area or length or whatever it is, and you chop it up into these little bitty tiny things. And then you find an equation that represents what you're trying to do. In this case, we're going to be adding up some lengths, okay? And, but we're adding them little bitty segments because we've chopped this thing up. And then what you do is you take the limit as those little segments go to zero, and you add up all of the infinite little, infinitesimally small little segments. And eventually, if you add up an infinitesimally, uh, an infinite number of these tiny, tiny segments, you, you converge on your 